Hello YouTube, this is Frank from Architectural Aesthetics. In the second episode of our Monuments in Watercolor series, we'll be looking at the ancient Egyptian pyramid complex at Giza. The ancient Egyptian pyramid building type, especially the Great Khufu Pyramid, which is the oldest and the only standing member of the Seven Wonders of the Ancient World, have long been hailed as one of the most important monumental architectures. The intricate logistics, mysterious building techniques, and the accuracy in the assembly of the giant stones entailed in those colossal structures demonstrate the ancient Egyptians' resolutions and skills. Since the pyramids were built over 6,000 years ago, though their physical structure have miraculously endured, unfortunately, their purposes have gradually faded with the passage of time. Other than the archaeological findings related to the speculations of their building techniques, we know very little about the pyramids, especially the ancient Egyptians' motivations behind building them. This void have encouraged countless theories, and with them, lores, legends, and mythologies. The purpose of this video is not to pose myself as an expert to ancient Egyptian history, nor to indulge in the fascinating theories of the pyramids being machines that can make pharaohs into godlike beings, or messages from ancient extraterrestrial visitors. Instead, I would like to take the pyramids at their face value and understand them as mausoleums, which means funerary monuments for the Egyptian pharaohs, and focus more on sharing with you the watercolor painting techniques deployed in this piece. Comparing to the subject of our previous episode, which is the Great Ziggurat at War, I venture to say that the pyramid building type is the antithesis of ziggurats. Aside from their similarities resulted from the trading relations between the ancient Egyptians and the ancient Babylonians, whereas the ziggurats are civic buildings that are close to major urban areas and are accessible to the commoners for them to worship the Babylonian gods, the pyramids are sacred architectures, removed from urban dwellings, prohibits entry of any kind as they are the houses for the deceased divine rulers. Now let's talk about the painting techniques. Just to toot my own horn a little bit, I think I'm getting better at applying flat or graded washes to large areas. I attribute this improvement to a book I recently read on architectural watercolor rendering written by the famed watercolorist Thomas Scheller. The gist of getting the hang of watercolor washes, as Thomas Scheller pointed out, is essentially mounting your paper onto a portable board, which gives you the freedom to tilt it at will. This way you can control your washes by manipulating the board and let the gravity do the work for you. And then all you have to do is to monitor and adjust the water and paint loaded on your brush, and just keep dragging the bead of water down to cover more paper surface. It's a very enjoyable, meditative, almost zen-like experience, and once you've got the hang of it, it gives you the ability to apply multiple passes of vibrant, transparent layers of color instead of having to mix up and hence reduce the vibrancy and the transparency of your colors. Now, I perceive the challenge of this piece being how to convincingly portray the texture of the exposed rock bricks. Because while watercolor is very good at representing smooth, continuous surfaces, using it to portray jagged, roughly textured surfaces could be difficult. With some experiments, my answer to this challenge is to use watercolor to build up the base color, and then to use soluble watercolor pencils to represent the rocks and bricks by applying patterns of lines. And overall, I would like to say that I'm happy with the final effect produced by this wet and dry combination. Lastly, as a self-reflection, I just want to say that I'm not quite happy with my treatment of the two smaller pyramids. I think the arrangement of the rocks could have been better represented by deploying a higher contrast in the palette to better portray the three-dimensionality of the ruin. Alright guys, so that wraps up today's video. I hope it's been informative, and please subscribe to the channel and let me know what do you think of this whole mythology revolving Egyptian pyramids, and more importantly, which other monumental architectures you would like to see in this series. And with that said, I'll see all of you in the next video, bye bye.